differently because I did martial arts and powerlifting and bodybuilding. I was an athlete, so I approached it as a time of battle. So I'm in there, and it is my time to challenge myself, my mind, and see how far I can push it. Uh, and it's a challenge that I love. show is one aspect of this. Right. The show is not the finish line. Right. We don't got a finish line. We have a checkpoint. We did the show. Let's continue forward. Now let's build even more. That's the successful person. It's an amazing thing life is. And if I could say anything to the youngsters, continue on your path, man. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Hey guys, I'm, my name is Dan Mendoza. I'm the founder of Muscle Icon. I'm sitting here with the one and only Mike O'Hearn, and we're going to go over a couple things about Muscle Icon and the South Bay Championships and what you guys can expect to look for as far as judging criteria and a couple different things about the show. So welcome, Mike. Thanks thank for you. Thank us. you. Before we start, yeah. can, uh, how old are you? 29. 29. Yep. Just puppy face. I love <laughs> this, man. What got you going on this? Because I am blown away, first of all. It goes back to the old school of where it is an actual fun show. Right. for this and so the fans are going to love it so much more instead of just people walking on stage with bodies right so right. what got you going man so initially what got me going is that last year i was competing for the july 4th um competition at muscle beach and it was my fifth show that i was getting ready for okay. and i've uh, i've been personal trainer for about 10 years or so and i always have my clients in mind especially when i'm going through things like competing and i just thought this is the utmost motivation like, I've got nothing in my way right now getting me to the stage, and this is what a lot of my clients are missing. And then I thought, started thinking about all these other people that may have a different perspective on what bodybuilding might be based on what's currently out there and what's being portrayed in the media. So in, uh, with the interest in trying to do something a little bit different, we started looking into our pipeline with who we knew and what kind of connections we had, and I just built up so many, training so many different clients. And the South Bay kind of being such a smaller community, we figured instead of complaining about what we don't like about how bodybuilding is being run or how the judging right. is, why don't we create our own show and try to give something back to the city of Torrance, to the South Bay, to LA a little bit and do something different from Southern California and give the uh, competitors an opportunity to, um, you know, to be shown in a different light, to show what their journeys are like, um, you know, help the audience kind of relate to who they are as competitors. Um, so there's a lot of things relating back to who the competitor is that we feel like is going to drive the industry in a, in a really positive way. So in creating something new like this, we want to offer the athletes an opportunity to, to have uh, more exposure as an athlete for who they are, prize money, sponsorships. And I always thought back to how I felt after the shows that I competed at. And the, the things that come to mind were I couldn't wait to leave after I got off stage. Okay. I got this tan on, it's in my eyes, I just can't wait to get it off and shower. And the other thing is I'm starving after the show. Um, I think those two things initially were what got us thinking, okay, maybe we can have those things at our show, you know? And then we started thinking, well, maybe we can make it more fun and have like, you know, photo booths or things for kids and, you know, try to get new people that aren't exposed to bodybuilding into bodybuilding, you know, and give them an opportunity to see what it's like. And then maybe we just create a whole new audience or get more people that aren't into bodybuilding into it and grow the sport that way. So the idea is to create an annual show for the South Bay that continues to build businesses locally and even you know people that are trying to make an impact that don't have an opportunity, you know, we give them a platform to do that. So they're real. Cool. I love it, man. <laughs> I love it. And thank you for making me part of this. Yeah. I'm absolutely. excited about that. You know, your journey especially really relates and uh, you you were one of the first people I thought of when thinking about you know, the competitor that we're trying to give this, you know, this award to or, um, you know, and showcasing who they are outside the stage. It's not just about what you look like on stage. It's how you carry yourself off the stage as well. That really motivates people to want to follow you and listen to what you have to say. So you're being too kind today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I've I would love to have an opportunity to create more people like that where. Um, you know, because in bodybuilding, that how you judge people um, on, you know, for what they look like yeah, on stage, and yeah. that all dictates on how they're going to carry themselves and what they're going to be training for outside the stage. Yeah. So, um, so I'd love to try to motivate the fitness community and put, have a positive impact with our show, and hopefully it grows every year, and we're able to get more people involved. And you know, and from looking at it right here, it, it seems like 
I, I'm picturing this into a TV show, into following these guys and, and following you into something even bigger. You're like, yeah. you remind me of a, a, a young uh, Vince McMahon. Okay. You know, starting out with WWE, you know, right. and, and creating something so epic and something big. Uh, I see that in you. Yeah, thanks, man. So, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm glad I'm on, I'm on the ride right now with you. Awesome. Um, so in kicking off and trying to give the, uh, the athletes a little more inside scoop as to, you know, who you are and stuff like that, um, what, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background as a competitor and wow. when you started the young age? Wow, <laughs> man, I, I, I started this young. I started uh, competing at 13, uh, won my first show by 14 years old, um, powerlifting and bodybuilding, doing martial arts tournaments. Uh, by 17, I was a monster already, uh, and that's when I was first in the magazines. Uh, so on teen scene for Iron Man magazine, were writing about me. So went off to the uh, teenage nationals in bodybuilding, competed against guys like Chris Cormier and those guys, um, and then went off to the nationals in powerlifting by 19. Dad and mom made me stop competing against teenagers by 19 and only compete against men. Um, by 19 and 20, I was winning the men shows, won the Mr. Universe. Jumping forward, Mr. Natural USA, Mr. Natural America, Natural International, so on and so forth. Uh, Four-time powerlifting champion, uh, California Judo champion. I was inducted in the Hall of Fame of uh, Martial Arts in 2014. Um, into the Hall of Fame of Bodybuilding in 2011. So I've competed so a few bits. Yeah, I've competed <laughs> a bit. But um, as I did that, I also did uh, movies, started... Uh, Death Becomes with Bruce Willis and Goldie Hawn in the 90s and continued forward with Gladiators in the early 90s, Battle Dome, soap operas, other guest shows, and uh, finished up with uh, another Gladiators. And I am off tomorrow to start filming a new movie, The Manson Brothers, with Max wow. Martini. So things are fun. Hollywood is fun. Uh, training is fun. But uh, more than anything else, it's, it's, it is incredible to uh, uh, live what I started with. And the ultimate goal maybe was never to wear a suit and tie, and I'm still holding that true today. Yeah. I get to travel the world, meet people, and uh, it's it's motivating. So, for some of the uh, for some of the new athletes going on stage for the show that we're competing, um, that we're hosting, we have we do have a number of athletes that are, it's their first time competing on stage. It's great. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's, I know you started a lot younger in your first competition, but going into the show, what advice would you have for the new guys that are going on stage for the first time and, you know, as far as what they can expect and things like that? What they can expect is to be nervous. They can expect to feel like they're not ready. What they should focus on is that us as the judges want to see their best. We don't want them to see nervous. Whatever they did to get there uh, is, is incredible. They're changed as individuals. And think about that more than uh, winning the show. I get you want to win the show. But you've done your work. Um, so that's out of your hands. So live in the moment. Because that's the one thing I, that's the one thing through my life that I've had to deal with is living in the moment. And I want them to live in the moment. Enjoy this. Don't get so nervous and wrapped up into the one aspect of this. But, uh, Get up there, enjoy it, make your moment. It's an art piece. Um, I believe it's an art show. It's apples and oranges, you know, and show what you are. Uh, and that comes out in the smile. Yeah. It comes out in you hitting the photos, uh, the, the poses and stuff. So that's what I want them to do is focus on that. And as a, as a bodybuilding judge, uh, what are you looking for in terms of criteria or like in terms of what the athletes look at on stage? Um, what do you feel like you would like to see in the... Obviously, in, in a perfect world, I want to see a complete body. Um, and, and from that, uh, you know, everything moves down from there. So if you don't have the complete body, make sure to show what you do have. Hide what you don't have. It's one of the greatest things Arnold ever said. You don't do poses that aren't your shot. Right. Um, so make sure to do you. Play up your strengths. Um, it's an art show. And it's performance, so you got to show your strengths. I am going to be looking for flaws. That's the one thing I'm going to look. As soon as I walk out there, I'm looking for flaws. Who's got the flaws? Who doesn't have the flaws? I'm going to be harsh on that. Um, I still want a beautiful body. So if you come out and you're smiling and, and you didn't do the work, obviously you're not going to get the reward. I right. want the guy that shows that, that he's done the work and, and he's done his best. Now, that being said, for the guys that get out there and maybe don't do well, this is just the start for them and continue forward on that, regardless of what happens here. I've judged... 
since the uh, early 90s. And I've seen guys that come out and get destroyed in shows and come back years later 10 times better. So it's also about just try to do this. You're going to be a different person after the show is over and continue to grow. Right, right. I always felt that after the show that I learned a lot from my experience before getting, going on stage and then every show is able to kind of build off of that. Um, one thing I did notice is after the first show I did, I had, you know, the amount of adrenaline or like, you know, motivation leading up to the show is a, a 10, you know, and if this is all you really have uh, going on, you know, you've got your movies and acting and everything like that, what strategies would you recommend athletes use after they get off stage when the show is over and they want to still kind of be motivators and, you know. And that's, that's, a good, that's a good question because here's one thing, uh, and I think you understand this as well as I do, and I'll try to explain this to everybody out there, is you got, you're so amped up. I got my 12 weeks to the show. That's old school mentality because you're going to do the photo shoots and all that kind of stuff prior to the show. You do the show, whatever happens, happens. Mostly if you don't even place most people spin off the other way. That's what we don't want to happen here because of the fact that in today's day and age, social media is such a big thing. So you got to figure out that a show is 12 weeks prepping for it, mm -hmm. but it's also 12 weeks after. I always talk to these kids and say, listen, set up your shoots. Not just the show. The show is one aspect of this. Right. But set up your shoots after the show. Stay focused on your dream after the fact. You are in that incredible shape. Don't just be there for one day. The one thing that I always made sure to do is I always made sure to stay in shape after the show and get the photo shoots and, and, and the videos and everything that you need to do because we are giving them a, plat a platform. This is what you're doing. You're giving them a platform to build themselves. They need to take that and they need to run with it. They can't just stop right after that. So right. they need to use that um, regardless of how they do in the show. I don't care if it's, they didn't place or they win the show. The person that does the work after the show is the one that succeeds. The one that continues forward going, okay, I'm gonna give it another 12 weeks, I might reverse out of my diet, I'm gonna to continue to do the photo shoots, I'm gonna to continue to talk about what I went through, and also talk about how they changed. Because like you said, how much do you change prior? Because you're in it, you don't really change, you don't notice right. it. How much do you change after the show? Right. Wow, I just did this, I actually did it. I dieted for 12 weeks, I didn't mess up, I went into this thing wholeheartedly, I had the support from everybody else, and now the next 12 weeks, I'm going to give appreciation back to friends and family that helped me, um, the artwork that I created, and do extra stuff afterwards. That's right. a huge part. And if they're not doing that now, I'll show you the winners in a year. When we have the next show, I'll show you the guys that continue to work after the show and didn't just go out and eat and party and go, okay, I'm done with that. Let's get back to work. That continued the pattern. Those are the guys that are going to succeed. So essentially like practicing a lifestyle out after the show that you're adopting. So it's almost like if you want to be a successful competitor, you have to adopt that year round or, or for the most part. I think you understand this, that the show is one aspect of this. Right. The show is not the finish line. Right. We don't got a finish line. We have a checkpoint. We did the show. Now let's continue forward. Now let's build even more. And the person that can take that, that motivation, hit the show regardless of what happens, and continue to build that motivation afterwards, that's the successful person. Yeah, that's, it is, um, you know, it is interesting you say that because after the show I found that I had to come up with new goals to hit outside of the gym and I felt like the gym is one goal, I can crush a workout, but you know, what am I working towards now, you know, and is it just to the next show, is it to something else? Um, it's, for as someone that is, has done a lot of success. How'd you things, flip that? Because you had to flip that, that, that mentality. Because right. you, you were competing, you mm -hmm. did the show, let's say you didn't do well. Right. All right, now I'm sad and I'm upset and I'm going to eat the pizza and I'm done with training for a week. Right. What switched that made you go, mm -mm, maybe I didn't do well, I'm going to continue forward? Because that's the switch that makes you a champion. That's why you're doing your own show now in your right. own league. This is something that I wish more people would grab onto. Right. So what was it that switched in you to go, I need more goals? Um, for me, I think I physically found a, uh, a cap in terms, of what, in terms of what I was able to provide physically for my clients throughout the week uh, and what I was able to do training-wise. You know, I was constantly experimenting with that in terms of you know, what's my output and then how much can I expect out of you know, what I've got going on and with what I have available to work with. And so um, what, ha what I used was um, the big motivator for me was Lindy. 
initially my girlfriend, you know, she's someone I really care about and she's a big motivation for me. And then last year around, you know, around the beginning of 2018, she was saying, you know, you've got all these great ideas. Like you should, you should pull the trigger on one of them, you know? Support crew, man. And the, so the support from her was a really big motivator for me, but also I think I just had to grow up a little bit and, and realize that. Hold on. A guy had to grow up? Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> it's a, it's a hard thing to admit, I think, for a lot of younger guys my age that, but, um, you know, just to step up and, you know, just go full throttle on what you want to do. I love hearing that, man. It's, it's, uh. It is a switch that you have to have, and I don't think it's something that can be taught. I think you just have to make the decision to commit to something new and move forward with it. And I, I gotta be stop you because I yeah. love that you did it at a young age, when when, when a man can just go, listen, it's, I gotta grow up. Yeah. When, when, and I'm glad you did that because it took me forever. I'm still trying to do that, but but you're such a young kid to do that. And I hope these guys, if nothing else from this interview, I hope they get that part that that at some point you gotta go. This is on me. Yeah, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, even for a lot of clients, like the goals come from them, you know, they have to be the ones that keep wanting to do it outside the gym. And, you know, um, so, uh, you know, for me going forward in, in, in uh, from when I started making that switch to uh, progressing into the show and what it is today, there were plenty of times, I think it was also noteworthy that there were plenty of times along that road where I had polarizing uh, opinions about what I was doing. And, I was thinking, you know, this would be significantly easier if I didn't have to do this show. Um, you know, it'd be a lot, I, you know, I'd be, I'd have this much more money. <laughs> you know, it's something like that. But then I, I also, you know, I, I really try to have the mentality of, I'm. it's not that I'm trying not to lose, I'm trying to win. So if I have the mentality of, I'm just trying not to lose this much money, I'm, I know I'm going to, I knew I was going to make wrong decisions. Okay. And so I like that. I'm, if I, in my mind, if I have the mentality to win, and then all these other things that are like, well, what ifs, they, they don't matter as much. It's just about the goal and getting there and, you know, thinking back to the original plan and, you know, what, what's, what am I trying to do here? You know, and it's not about me, it's about them. Then I got a question then leading sure. into that. What is your goal on judging? So on judging, um, my goal is to create something um, or eventually kind of grow this into something that people are competing for our show specifically and they know what they're competing for but that we're rewarding the right guys based on what we're seeing up there how um, is it different so from uh, you know from perspective of someone that watches you know other organizations um, it seems like they have a specific figure they're looking for um, and uh, you know with the classic physique division coming in it seemed like that was going to be something really different um, but now it's it from what I've seen it almost seems like they're just looking for many bodybuilders and it's almost going to turn into the 212 division. That's kind of what it seems like. But um, I would really like to try to emphasize, uh, you know, I, I really love the whole idea of showcasing your physique through posing and, you know, having the flow Absolutely. of muscles being really beautiful as opposed to just having the guy with the biggest muscles. Um, I've been to a lot of shows, I think, where there's a guy that's really dried out and thick, but the guy next to him just looks a lot healthier and just looks, he looks like he could probably, you know, do a whole Spartan race or something like right. that, or and he looks really athletic, but also doesn't look like he's gonna pass out on stage. Right. You know? um, so for me, I was, I would love to do justice to the sport of bodybuilding. I don't want to create anything brand new, but I think we have a really unique opportunity to steer this in a direction that we think is going to be good for the younger guys coming in and for the new generation. And that's really where I'm, my focus is is for the younger guys. Because when I first got into this, I didn't really know. You know, I didn't really know how a lot of this was supposed to go. It, there wasn't a ton of information out there unless I really went out and looked for it. Right. But then there's so much of it. So what do you follow? Um, you know, so what, it wasn't easy to try to find your own path. Um, but with the resources that we have with Muscle Icon, I think we can provide resources for athletes to help them uh, find their own way. Not necessarily give them our way of doing it, but to help them find their own way. So that when they're going up and training for a show, they're training for their best physique, not for... They're not trying to look like you. They're trying to look like the best version of them. You know? Exactly. And that's what you guys want to see. You want to see someone who owns what they have, is confident, that looks really good, that put a lot of hard work into it, and it shows on stage. Right? I love that. I, I just spoke about that yesterday in a seminar where I was saying that, uh, uh, and I was with some other IFBB pros that we were talking about this, and I, in my opinion is this is definitely not a sport. It is an art show. Right. Um, and the one thing I don't want any competitor to do at anything 
is try to appease me as a judge relative to appeasing them. If you walk out with the greatest physique that you want, you will continue this. If you're coming out and you're just trying to win a show and trying to appease these nine judges, you're changing your physique for what we want, and that's never good. I think any time that a, an athlete is trying to create an art piece for other people, that's not going to mot motivate them through life. I mean, I've, the one thing I was so proud about in my career is since I got into it is that I never changed my approach to how I wanted to look. I didn't need to do this to appease them and, and try to win a show going, because um, judges would always come up going, hey, dude, oh, you would look incredible, about 20, 30 pounds heavier. And I'd be like, thank you so much. That's incredible information. I'd turn around and go, you're absolutely crazy. I would never yeah. do that to me. Right. I'd never do that to my physique. It wasn't what I, what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and for me to go into the gym every morning at 4 a.m. to train is because I'm creating my piece. And that's what you're saying about these guys. Come in, create your, your piece, piece for what right. you want. And if it's rewarded, it's rewarded. If it's not, you'll continue forward regardless of what happens. Right. And, I, and that's one of the one thing I hate about shows is, and I tell these kids, when you go in, let's say hypothetically you take 15th, um, and that crushes you. But if you're happy with your physique, that shouldn't crush anybody. You know what I mean? Right. It, it really comes down to, no, I like how I looked. I wouldn't change how I look to, to win that trophy because I don't want the guys that won first place. Because that's the real question here. If you ever look at a show and you go, the first place guy is just 10 times better than me. A lot of guys will say, no, I actually like my physique over theirs. That's the guy that's going to continue. And that's all we're saying to him. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's hard for a lot of people that don't have a lot of self-confidence at the beginning to try to adopt that and to own it. Um, so it's, it's one of the things that we, we do want to address is after the show and, you know, whatever place you end up placing in, you know, what are you taking away from it and using to, you know, to make your next appearance or next stage appearance that much better and that much more effective. Um, as far as, um, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask was how, um, you know, social media is one of those things that influences a lot of people, especially young guys that are susceptible to influence like that, uh, negative and positive. How do you use social media as your ally and not as a source of anxiety or frustration that a lot of people struggle with? Um, I, it, this is going to be tough, uh, because I'm, a, I'm an old fart, so I'm set in my ways and I know who I am. And, and, and um, I, I think if you can just try to get it as a younger age like you are, you know who you are. You know what you stand for. Um, and so a lot of the negativity is not negativity. That's just a common average person's a, opinion, which none of us want to be average. Regardless of how much they, want to, they hate hearing that, right. nobody wants to be average. Um, and if you're going to go off the average, the negativity of average, you're not going to become anything. Um, so believe in yourself, obviously. Uh, use social media for what you believe in. Stay true to what you believe in. Don't worry about the negativity. Uh, the great thing about negativity is it just shows you you're doing things right. right. And you've got people actually. I mean, let's think about this. Somebody's taking time out of their day to go to your page and comment to you. You don't even know them. But they're taking time out of their lives where you're continuing on your path. Just think about that for a second. Never go back. Never talk to these guys. Right. Let them do their thing. It's the greatest thing when you go through life and you just continue your path forward. And hopefully everybody will have a career like I have to where you get to go back and, and, and I get messages from people 20 years ago going, man, I disliked you and all this and that, but I came back around. It was me at that time. It's an amazing thing life is. And, and if I can say anything to the youngsters, continue on your path, man. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Don't worry about negativity. Negativity is the average person. Um, and, and be that 1%, that elite person that's creating something, that's going out and making his own show because he wants to see something different. Right. That's the kind of stuff that I like seeing. That's who I want to hang out with, too. This is, that's all I let in my bubble. People that dis, are, are outside the norm, that are doing something special. A little bit different, yeah. It is, um, it is a little scary doing something different, but... I think it's just a Don't new, you like that though? Yeah, it's Come a new on. it's like a new level that I'm kind of getting used to. Like at first I I noticed my stress levels were kind of like at a 3 or 4 constant, you know, and then I just got used to it and um, you know, it is really motivating throughout that. I think it's it is how you use that that pressure or that um, you know. I find it that it's building us. I, it, you can test yourself in the yeah, gym, right? Right. Yeah. You can do your diet and that pushes you. You can do your weight training, you get up the weight and that's going to push you. How do you do it in life? 
right push yourself yeah. challenge yourself like that and it's fun to grow that way yeah it is um i find i have to check in with myself quite a bit um you know oh and just God. check in <laughs> and make sure like you know hey you're doing a good job or you know um uh, how do you do that? You know, do you take moments? What do you do? Yeah, I take moments. Uh, you, for me, it's car rides, you know, in, nice. in the car. Like, I get to kind of have my own moment. I actually look forward to that. It, I get, like, a 15-minute ride on the way home, um, you know, where I get to kind of reflect on what I'm doing. Do you listen to music? No music? Um, a lot of times I'll listen to podcasts, actually, okay. in the background, because hearing other people talking, for for whatever reason, it's able, it allows me to kind of focus on my own thoughts. Um and oh yeah something re- you know resonates they say something you go i had that experience I, that right yeah or even having something slightly distracting in the background just okay. for some reason helps me kind of hone in on what i'm thinking and i end up and it, and it is that as well i end up hearing something on a podcast and i'm like oh that's really interesting like how how can i use that or you know how is that relatable to me or my clients um and in checking in with myself i guess i i think it's important to what you say to yourself is really important. And I don't think people really consciously say things to themselves, but they do. It's like the whole parasympathetic and sympathetic thing in the gym where you're, you may be telling your body, I want to push this bar up, but your, your brain and body are trying to figure out what muscles are most suitable to do it. You know, I want this to fire. I want this. You're not directly, you know, a lot of people aren't directly telling themselves that, but I think it is important um, to check in with yourself like that and to, you know, maybe not fake it till you make it, but to be honest with like how I'm really doing. And I'm able to check in with Lindy a lot and to, you know, reference like, yeah, that's great. you know what I mean? No, 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 no. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I still do that. And, and I, I recommend people to do that. You do car rides. I take time with the pups. They center Perfect. me, they bring me down to make me live in the moment go, Hey, what's up? What's important? Yeah. Uh, living in the moment is definitely something I've had to practice. Um, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it is, because you've got all these things you're worried about, right? I'm sure, you know, a lot of people that have big projects or, you know, multiple things. In, or that we're so life. aggressive that we want to keep going forward and build and build and build. Right, right. Um, I think it's a really common thing for a lot of younger guys getting into the gym to adopt the role as I'm a bodybuilder, I build muscle, you know, and um, it's hard to, you know, I found myself when I first started talking about the gym 24-7, talking about what I was eating, talking about what supplements I was taking, people were asking questions. That'd I'm be going a really out. boring, boring it's, boyfriend. It's so, I know, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was like one of my best friends pulled me aside. He's like, dude, you know what? I get it. Stop. Just, yeah, enough with the working out stuff. And so I had to kind of compartmentalize like, okay, this is, this is the gym life. You know, like what am I building in my everyday life? You know? Nice. Um, for you as a competitor, how, how were you able to do that? Were you just... Do you focus on the gym just in the workout and then the rest of the day is dedicated to, you know... Um, I, I don't talk about the gym or nutrition outside of the gym, um, but I also use the gym differently. I, I, I never approached it as uh, I was a bodybuilder uh, because I did martial arts and powerlifting and bodybuilding. I was an athlete, uh, so I approached it as a time of battle. Um, okay. And it's also my meditation. So I'm in there and it is my time to challenge myself and my mind um, and see how far I can push it. And that really explodes that that uh, that uh, born gladiator within me, my energy. So boom, I got that out of the way. The rest of the day is business and working on other stuff. So that's how I deal with it. Um, the one thing I, I think that I really grew in life is when I realized that I never used bodybuilding in the aspect of just building muscle or just building strength. I was never locked into that. I was built into how far can I make myself a hybrid? How okay. athletic can I be? How, how, how muscular, how strong at all times, regardless of the nutrition at that point? Because I'm one of those guys that doesn't matter if I'm carb depleted or, or fasting or anything, I lift heavy for the rep range that I'm going. Uh, and it's a challenge that I love. But it also takes care of us when we were so stressed out, you, you blow that load in a sense and, and now you're ready for the rest of the day to focus on the business aspect of it. Because that gym is only a portion, small portion. We got to do that 22 other hours of the day, and that's business to create something bigger. Right, right. So it's almost like using your schedule outside the gym to support what you've done in the gym, or almost vice versa, right? Like this, the working out in the morning. That is like only morning, foundation. Kind of like revs you up, like yeah. day, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I ended up using a lot of my workouts is, um, is just as a way to kind of accelerate what I'm doing outside the gym. But um, 
but it gets tough. Like when taking on new projects, I had to, I had to come up with a new strategy. You know, I couldn't work out at the same time every day if I had muscle icons to focus on and training, if I took on a new client or, you know, it's, so I think it's, it, it takes practice, but um, it seems like you've been able to achieve a pretty good balance of home life, family life and, and work. Um, so uh, any final thoughts that you would give to the athletes before they go on stage? Or before uh, on? Final thoughts for the athletes. Um, come in showing your best ability of what you've been doing. Understand the show is just a checkpoint. We're gonna continue forward after that. Um, we're gonna to try to hype these boys up and have some serious fun. Yeah, man. This is gonna be a fun show. Oh yeah. And it's gonna be old school fun show to where you, you wanna go and you wanna hang out and you wanna support everybody. Yeah. So to everybody there, man. Yeah, it's gonna be great. We've got a lot of cool additions to the show. We've got the mayor's the location. Yeah. The way it looks, everything yeah. you're doing to this thing is gonna be Yeah, we got the mayor coming doing a ribbon cutting ceremony before the show starts. And we got someone singing the Star Spangled Banner. We got um, we got pancake artists coming doing pancake art. It should be oh, really fun. Oh wow. Um, you know, we'll have uh, we'll have a couple, you know, known people there. Um, and uh, um, you know, it'll it'll just be great. You know, it'll be uh, a lot of a lot of fun for the new um, people that are not familiar with bodybuilding because I think there's going to be a number of people there that have never seen a bodybuilding show before that are not familiar with it. So I'm really excited to kind of give them a different perspective on what the sport might be. Um, We're going to set them home forward. happy afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be like, okay, that was a fun night out. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, we'll only grow from there. I love it. That's the goal. Thanks for making me cool. part of this. Yeah, man. Mike, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was great. And, uh, you know, we'll see you guys on May 11th.